inflation in a normal time period is way higher. I don't know how true that is, but I don't, it's fun. You know, I don't know why we're doubting scientists uh, anymore, but anyway. Yeah, weird, right? How scientists don't. Listen, it's science, and therefore we'll it get, is not up for debate. We'll get there. Let's, let's first talk about, uh, we had quite an eventful little morning in the uh, world of crypto. Eventful if you're new to crypto. This is just everyday, run-of-the-mill, daily uh, dip if you're uh, a uh, seasoned veteran of the crypto world. But um, Bitcoin and all the other cryptos uh, reached new levels. Uh, Bitcoin reached 58,000, 58,300 maybe someplace around there. Um, but this morning, as we were waking up here, uh, down to 46,000 for a blink. Uh, right now, I think above my head, it says, what, 53,000? I can't really see it right now, but uh, yeah, 53,000 something. Somewhere in there. Um, so very volatile day in the world of crypto. Uh, same thing with all the altcoins. You can see that they kind of tumbled right along with Bitcoin. That's kind of been my, con my conjecture, if you will, that the altcoins kind of rise in relation with Bitcoin and it needs Bitcoin to kind of be the catalyst for all these other altcoins. Um, and when it drops, everything drops. Um, but there are massive amounts of money invested into these cryptocurrencies, especially, especially and specifically Bitcoin. So those dips seem to last less and less, seem to be less deep and deep. Um, I think those institutions are just buying the dips quicker than the retail public. And I'm not sure there's ever going to be one of those 40% uh, dips anymore in crypto. I, I know you're relatively new to crypto. Seasoned Ethereum uh, investor you are. Sure. Um, any uh, hot crypto takes here in uh, today's uh, dip and bounce? I still have no idea what makes it go up and down. <laughs> I mean, not a clue. It's just like, oh, it's down by 11% today. I lost some money. All right, cool. I, like, I got nothing to say. I don't know. It's it's there. It's it's yeah. fun to watch. I think cryptocurrency in, is a... This is not investment advice. Don't take it as investment advice. I think cryptocurrency makes sense in the long run because I know how flimsy the dollar actually is. And I know how... Watch, we are just, what we are doing to the dollar might be perfectly fine with no downside whatsoever. It might be. I would fly in the face of all historical evidence and historical cases of when other countries have done this to their currency. Now, maybe it's different this time. Maybe I'm missing something. Maybe all these economists and Keynesian economists are really just that much smarter. Maybe. It's possible. But I'm looking back and thinking, man hyperinflation, stock market going crazy, so much currency just being dumped onto the books, uh, equities and investment vehicles all just quadrupling in price and no real basis to uh, value any longer. Everybody's a speculator. Boy, there's a lot of, lot of uh, correlations to draw, and I, I don't know that cryptocurrency is ever going to replace the dollar or gold or anything else. But I do think that human nature in the event of something like uh, hyperinflation or a, a even devaluation of the currency or something is going to lead people into wanting to own cryptocurrency. So the idea is just be one step ahead of, all right, well, let's own some crypto first. And here's the reality. If it goes to zero, it goes to zero. I, I don't have a clue what I'm doing with this. It's fun to watch. I enjoy it. I don't think it's going to go to zero. But if it did, I'll get right on the show and explain to you. I still have no idea why all my money's gone. Good job, Ben. Now it's down to fifty two thousand seven hundred. <laughs> Look at the influence I'm having. You are a you are a market mover. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, I <clears throat> I do I think Bitcoin and crypto in general um, does serve as some kind of I don't know if it's I mean I think people want it to be a hedge against the dollar or w inflation or what, but I think maybe it was Dylan Radigan actually even said this. It's kind of like to me almost like a an alarm, right? So it's a Everybody knows that there's something wrong with the dollar and I guess traditional indicators would be metals and, and whatnot, but, but everything is so distorted right now that I think people are just like, all right, this is the new thing that, you know, yeah, it's measured in dollars because, but you could conceivably trade back and forth Bitcoin to each other without ever going into dollars. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Like I said, I don't know that it ever takes over anything, but um, I do think that it is at least a... Uh, at, at anything, a symbol of the times that we are in financially in this country and maybe the world. So it is um, the world and it's, it is crazy. I think you're right, though. I think that the people know that what's happening is not is not right. And it's it, you like there's this instinctual reaction of like, man, I don't know. This seems crazy. Like you, you think about I always go back to this example, but 
the debt 10 years ago was two trillion or three trillion dollars and we thought that was completely unsustainable and now it's at 30 and we got people out here who are like this is no time to be a deficit hawk it feels kind of like a good time <laughs> If there, like, if there ever was a time right like maybe yeah no i think maybe this is you know as the ship sinking like this is no time to talk about lifeboats but when when was the time to talk about lifeboats yeah it's never the right time because it's inconvenient and nobody wants to hear that but i i do think people are drawn to that especially as you find out more information about how it's not i don't want to call it outward like corruption or illegality although i think there is some of that going on some of it is just it's too much centralized planning and handling by imperfect people with incomplete knowledge. And that's what you keep seeing. So my fear is that as you continue to do this and try to prevent any downside, like 2008, 2009 bailouts of all the banks, like well, that's a terrible idea. Now, now what's their incentive going right, to be moving that, forward? And that was the genesis of Bitcoin in general. So right. I mean, I mean, that was why the white paper was written. Right. And now it's a, all right. So people understand like thirty trillion dollars of debt is like you're not you're not paying that. Yeah, back. and I don't know if you know the number offhand, but some ridiculous number like twenty to fifty, or maybe it was. I can't remember what percentage of that was actually printed this year, but it was a distortedly high number. Like yeah. twenty percent of all dollars ever distributed were distributed in twenty twenty. So the Fed basically owns like I think it's now twelve trillion dollars of the debt. Like we owe the U.S. Federal Reserve twelve trillion. We owe, we owe ourselves debt you're saying it's amazing like this why don't we, we just write that off we own the social security <laughs> administration three trillion sorry folks but that's all been given over and loaned to the government it's right on it's right online you can look it up so it's just, it's not funny it's really actually scary but you can tell something is wrong because this doesn't make logical sense you can't just keep doing this and i'll say this again fraud is not wrong because it's illegal Fraud is illegal because it is wrong, because it's going to lead to worse things. And if you're fraudulently manipulating these things into an imbalanced or an unnatural state, that's going to have negative consequences. I don't know what they are. I don't think anybody really does. But historically speaking, what you usually get from this is either hyperinflation and a devaluation of your currency or economic stagnation for decades. It, like there's not an upside to this. There's not a winning formula on your way out the door here. It's it's all bad options, and I think people are afraid of that, wary of that, at least aware of that now, whereas in years past they really haven't been. But like you're telling me, again, everybody's asking the wrong questions. Like The economists are like, well, we really need to worry about getting some inflation going because there's not enough. And I'm going, what? <laughs> Things aren't more expensive than they were 10 years ago? You're lying. And then you dig down and you start to realize like, oh, it's because when you're calculating GDP, you've changed the definitions of all of these things. Nobody wants to like bear down and read that part of it. But you're going, wait, what do you mean that my, my house counts as an asset? Okay, I can get on board with that. Not only that, but any equity in my house that I can borrow against also counts as an asset. Uh, uh, what? Like, okay, so if I borrow money from a bank... That is not a liability. It's an asset, period. Interesting. I, I think I would have, you know, maybe done that differently. Yeah, well, that, that makes the banks work, so. Right. And I, it's just crazy. Like, this is, the, the more you learn about this, and I know I'm boring people and I apologize, but you should look into this. It's crazy. And it, I, think, I think maybe that's the silver lining of the crypto thing is so people get into Bitcoin because the price and the, the, the novelty of it. But then if you stumble upon to somebody who may have a little bit of reason why Bitcoin might have some value, like as you just laid out, you could in educate and inform some people about the current status of the dollar and all things, you know, that relate to that and how it's uh, a house of cards in a lot of ways. So maybe there's a silver lining there. I, I don't know. We were talking about them go over to Zoom. Do you think uh, if, if crypto market collapses, say we're in, I don't know, 2025 and Bitcoin is like a dollar again, right? And all these all these cryptocurrencies are pennies. Do you think Wall Street Bets gets involved and starts jamming some of these things back yes. up? Yes. <laughs> I love these guys. Like, they're nuts, and they're going to go do it, and they're going to just go and pump everything way up. And look, it's all dangerous because it's all speculation, so you got to know when to get out, and that's really the hard part that I don't think anybody really grasps, myself included. Even the most avid cryptocurrency proponent couldn't tell you with certainty 
yeah, it's only going to go this high. I got to imagine every single person who's ever traded on something in their life has lost money at some point. So, yeah, if I you're mean, not, you're probably doing something your, illegal. Your last name is Madoff, right? Yeah, yeah so, like you, you broke the law for sure. Because is, losing is a part of investing. It's just you're going to have temporary losses. And, you, you know, you sell them, you hold them, whatever you want to do. But they happen. I I love the cryptocurrency angle. I find it to be very exciting. I find it to be really fun to watch. I don't mind the wild swings. I don't mind all of this up and down, back and forth. Like, all right, down 10%. Let's go buy some more. What the heck? It's on Why sale. Yeah, it's on sale. What the heck? Let's go do that. And it's the same basic premise as investing of, I love the people that are like, well, why is a Bitcoin worth $53,000? Like, because somebody decided that it is. Somebody bought one at $53,000. Yeah, why is Apple worth... $32 per share or $29 a share now because somebody decided that it is. And it's not, the problem isn't that cryptocurrency investing is not speculating because it absolutely is. It's speculating. It's all you're doing. It's not real investing. You're guessing, you're betting, you're gambling. The problem is the majority of investing on Wall Street has also become that. It is not like you invest in a company that you want to own and then they pay you a dividend for owning it forever. They can't do it that way anymore. Interest rates are too low. They're doing stock buybacks. The Fed puts money into the into existence out of nowhere. It comes into existence. They go out. They generate all this money. They go buy corporate bonds. Okay, so you just loan money to these corporations. They then take the money that the Fed loaned them after creating out of nowhere, and they buy back their own stock and drive up the price. Why did the stock price go up? That's it. It's not because the company is inherently more valuable. It's not because they're inherently more profitable. It's because the company went, bought the stock on the market, therefore creating demand. That drives up the price even further because now the supply is less and the demand is greater. People want to go in and buy it because now there's momentum and now everybody loves momentum. And so they get on board with that and it goes up further. And then the year end hits. Yeah. And guess whose compensation is directly tied to stock price? Every single person on the leadership team and the board of directors. Yeah, and like I said, when when, when the everybody. Fed is you know giving out money at zero percent interest, they just borrow it and do exactly what you just said. So why wouldn't you? Right. What's the downside? No. I mean, well, well, there'll eventually be one. But well, we'll, yeah, but you're not going to. I mean, we, we, they won't suffer, it, but we'll suffer it. Well, yeah, because then they and this is the stupidity of bailouts again. Of now, you, these people do these things that are obviously they're not illegal. It's not even really wrong. No, just let them suffer the consequences when they fail. Right. Just let them actually fail when they fail, and that's that's what nobody wants to acknowledge. Of or I shouldn't say that. I think most people actually have come around on the idea of bailouts is wrong. But let's be very clear. They're going to bail them out again when this happens, but I don't know that they're going to have the capacity to because you're now, you usually only print and spend money in times. I mean, they've been bailing them out pretty much weekly. Straight through. Straight. I mean, it's, 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 it's you won't, you'll never get a TARP thing again because they changed the rules so it doesn't have to go through Congress anymore. They can just give them the money. Yeah, so. And that's what they're doing, which is, yeah. again, I know this, this subject matter is kind of boring and I know it's really dry. If you dive into the weeds just a little bit, you will be both fascinated and horrified by what we are doing every single day with the amount of money that is just pencil, or excuse me, computed into existence. We're not even bothering to print it anymore. We're just de de declaring it exists on a computer and writing the code. Now, buy in the Fed and read that book and start there. That's a great book. And it is, and I, listen. I, it's short, it's easy, like you get a good gist, and it's it'll lead you to the next thing. And it's... It's worth knowing because... And it's 10 years old. It is 10 years. That's what I mean. That was that was when he was all upset that that was at $3 trillion. <laughs> it looks like so childish now. <laughs> but it's we should have been worried about a $3 trillion debt. Listen, the $3 trillion is a three with 12 zeros after it. Write that number down. That's what we owed somebody 10 years ago. Now all we did is added another zero in 10 years. Where are we going to be 10 years from now? Are we going to stop spending? Are we... Uh, like? Oh, no, we're going to raise taxes. Listen, I, I promise you, if you are thinking of raising taxes, you're not paying attention to how many different taxes you're currently paying. Because not, it's not just your income tax. It's not, it's not just your FICA tax. Like, if you want to own a business, especially in New York State, you've got to pay, uh, listen, never mind all that, you've got to pay the other half of the FICA.